Welcome to Electron Online. In previous videos, we established that integration is in a way finding the area underneath a curve. If we take, for example, the integral of the function f of x, that is equal to the area underneath the curve graphically represented by that function f of x, so it would be equal to the area underneath this curve. So to get a feel for what integration is, let's think about it this way. If I'm trying to find the area underneath the curve, and of course because of the curve it's difficult to do, I can approximate the area by drawing rectangles on the graph. I can go here, draw a line straight up to this line, then draw a horizontal line here, and say this is the area A1 of this section right here, which approximates the area underneath the curve. Now you say, well, approximates, it's not about twice the, this, twice the area, and I, I would agree, yes, it's quite a bit more, but let's say that it's at least somewhere in the ballpark. I can do the same for this second section right here and draw a line this way, and I can say that this is area 2, and that this area of the rectangle is a little bit more than the area underneath the curve, and I can go ahead and do that again for this section right here, and oh, close enough, there we go, and you can say that this is area 3, which is again approximately the area underneath the curve, and I can do area 4, which again I can say is approximately equal to the area underneath the curve. A little bit more, but hey, we're close, we're in the ballpark. I can say then that the area is approximately equal to the sum of all the areas, and in this case there's four sections, so from i equals one to four. Of course, most people would say that's quite unsatisfactory because I do think I have quite a bit more area than, I, than should be underneath the curve. Well, what I can do to remedy that is I can have more sections, make them thinner like that, and do the same thing. So I can come up here, and say this is the area 1, and do this here, this is area 2, and here this is area 3, and this is area 4, and this is area 5, and I come up here, this is area 6, this here is area 7, this here is area 8, and area 9, and this is area 10. Now you can see that if I add up those 10 areas from, from 1 all the way up to area 10, you can see that there's not as much that pokes up above the curve right here. So if I add up all these additional areas here, those are definitely smaller than the total of these four right here. And so I can say that when I sum these up, the area is approximately equal to the sum from i equals 1 to 10, because now I have 10 sections of all the a sub i's. Again, you may say, well, that's true, it's not quite as bad, but it's still not nearly as good as I would like it. What you can do is, again, have more sections like that. In this case, I have 32 sections. I have 4 here, I have 10 here, here I have 32 sections. And when I do the same thing here, notice that now the area of these curves right here very closely resemble the true, the true nature of this, of this graph and the total area underneath this curve. If I just keep doing that, you can see that, yes, I do have slightly higher or slightly more area than I should have, but you can see now that the excess area that I have in those small little triangles above the graph, they're not really that much when you add them all up, when you go all the way up to here and eventually you get the last area right here. This would be the area of the last section right there. You can see that when you add them all up, area underneath the curve will be approximately equal to the sum of all the a sub i's, in this case i going from 1 to 32. I think you begin to see the pattern. If I just want the area in those rectangles to exactly equal the area underneath the curve, I just need to come up with more and more and more rectangles. 32 is not enough, maybe I need 100, maybe I need 1000. How about if I have a million rectangles, they're all so thin that the excess area, that little corner that would stick out, is so minuscule in size that at that time, for all intended purposes, if I add up a million of those rectangles, the area underneath, included in those rectangles, would be very, very, very closely to the area underneath the curve. In essence, when we go to an infinite number of areas, if I let the area, the number of areas, go up to a billion, a trillion, a quadrillion, then in the end, as it goes to infinity, the area added up for each of the rectangles will exactly equal the area underneath the curve. And it turns out that's in a way the definition of the integral. The integral of the function f of x dx 
going from zero, in this case from zero to four, because we have a definite integral, we only want to do it underneath this region of the function, in essence is equal to the sum, or I should say not like this, but I should say the limit as the number, so we go from i to 4, or from i to 10, or from i to 32, if we call this number n, and the limit where n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of all the a sub i's. So, with other words, if we just make enough rectangles, millions of them, billions of them, so they're so, so thin that the additional area sticking out is so minuscule or small that in essence, if I go to the limit where I let n go to infinity, an infinite number of rectangles, the area summed up by all those rectangles will exactly equal the area underneath the curve, and in essence that is equal to the definition of this integral right here. So integration is basically finding the area of the curve by making the areas by making the rectangles thinner and thinner and thinner in the limit when the thickness goes to zero and the number goes to infinity all the areas added together will exactly equal the integral of the function and that's another way of looking at integration and looking at integrals